Yo, what's going on guys? So we just got the new 3.16 league announcement which is going to be released on October 22nd so in around one week from now on. In this video I want to go over just the league mechanic and some key changes to the game. I don't want to go over everything since there has been a lot of things announced during this announcement and also on top of that we got the patch notes so that's a lot of information informations at once so that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make multiple videos and in each video i'm gonna cover the specific topic okay so again in this one i want to cover the scourge league mechanic and like always i am I am going to look at it from the currency making point of view. So at the end of the video, I expect some predictions on how you will be able to make currency with it. But first, let's watch the short trailer. The day the demons found our world, the innocent were first to die. They approach your world, your Rayclast. You must take the fight to them. Embrace the power of chaos. Become more than mortal. Face the nightmare. They are endless. They are the scourge. Okay, so now let's look at how the mechanic actually works. So here, as you can see, there is a button at the bottom, and there is also some new UI here, and you have some stacks over here. So the way it works, you will go through the zone, you will kill some monsters, and when you kill monsters, you will fill this blood vial. And after it's filled, at least halfway there, you will be able to press this button. And as you can see here, you will be uh, entering this scourge mechanic. So basically the whole zone is gonna be covered in scourge. And the scourge is time encounter, so as you can see here, you will be losing time and depending on how much blood you have, you will have more time to clear the zone. Also, in case you want, you actually can leave the scourge by pressing the button again, but you can do it immediately. So as you can see here, when you enter the scourge, you have to wait some amount of time and now this button is enabled so you can actually press it and leave the scourge. Also at the same time when you are inside of the scourge you will be gaining the stacks and these stacks will make you take increased damage. So the more you are inside of the scourge the more stacks you will have and you will take more damage. And also these stacks persist throughout uh, multiple encounters inside one zone. So as you can see here this character um, here already before entering the scourge already has 24 stacks. So that means this character already was in one of the scourges and it gained 24 stacks and now he's entering second one so he will be gaining even more stacks. Okay, now why would you do this league mechanic? So basically what you 
can uh, gain from it. So first of all, you will just drop normal items like from any monsters or any league mechanics, just some random currency. And also you can loot this currency even after the scourge closes. So the currency will be left on the ground, kind of like how the bridge works. When the bridge opens, you clear it and after it's closed, you can still loot the stuff from uh, all of the monsters that were there. You don't have to loot while it is opened. And the second uh, reason why would you do it is because of the transformation of the items. So here you can see there is a new device. Let's wait a second. So here there is a new device which you can click and you can open this uh, crucible. So here you can put items and after you kill a certain amount of monsters, and by the way, this is not the, exactly the amount of monsters you have to kill, this is the corruption you have to absorb. So this basically means like a rare monsters or bigger monsters will give you more corruption, smaller monsters will give you less. So this is not exactly the amount of, amount of monsters you have to kill, it's probably much less. But after you kill this amount of sketch monsters, you will be able to press the transform button at the bottom and you will corrupt the item and it will gain some implicits. After you've done that, you can corrupt it second time, as you can see here. It's transformed second time and now it's tier 2 and it's changed the implicits. And you can do it up to tier 3, so it, it can be corrupted three times. And also you can corrupt or transform the item that is already corrupted with just the Val Orbs. And in terms of implicits, you will always get one random uh, positive implicit and one negative. So if, for example, here you um, you don't really want the minus cold resistances, you can go and corrupt it third time, maybe to get something different, and you maybe don't want the socketed cold gems, so you can reroll it. And each time the tier, tier of the item is being higher, which means also the modifiers have a chance to be better. Uh, also, the monsters will drop new tainted currency. And also, by the way, on this website, you can see, for example, here, uh, you can see three maps or uh, multiple amount of items and if you press this button you actually will be able to see more of them for example now you can see four and here without the button you would not be able to see the Maloney mechanism so the other things you will be able to get from the scourge is the new tainted currency so here are all of them so tainted chromatic orb or perfusing and jewelers orb so these are basically a normal uh, like a socket base currency, but they can be applied to corrupted items. So now you will be able to fuse, uh, so link, add sockets and change color of the corrupted items without using the crafting bench. Also there is a new currency, Tainted Blessing, which can be placed in the Divine Font, so in the Lab Enchant device, to allow corrupted uh, gloves, boots or helmets or belts to be enchanted enchanted, which is actually very big. So what you will be able to do is, for example, you can put like a helmet with that drops from the Awakener and corrupt it a few times. And let's say you hit like a plus one to cold gems, then you will know that this helmet is for someone that, want, that is playing with cold skills. So you will be able to uh, apply some kind of uh, cold skill enchant on it. So first you can choose the corruption and then you can go for the enchant on the helmets. So that's a big big uh, quality of life. And it can be good for making money with the mm, enchants. The next thing in terms of the scourge is the new passives for that league mechanic. So here you can see you can uh, apply these passives to your crucible. 
So when you are killing monsters, you will gain some experience for this device, and then you can just apply some passives, which will increase the rewards. So for example, this one, jewelry will gain increased corruption. And there is also, I believe, this one, which will give you one more slot for the uh, items you can place for the transformation device. And the last reward you can get from the sketch leak mechanic is transforming the maps. So as you can see here, there is also a slot for the map. So you will not be able to, for example, put this map in this slot. There will be multiple slots here, maybe multiple slots here. We don't know that, but you will not be able to uh, put the same items in the same slots. These are probably just for armor, weapons, maybe jewelry, maybe they have different slot, but this one is only for the maps. So what happens when you transform the map? So as you can see here, the map can be scourged, so transformed up to 10 tiers. So you can see that at the bottom here. And it works basically the same as for the items. The map will become corrupted and then it will gain the implicit which uh, one of them will be bad and one of them will be good. So for example, this one, player has have 30, minus 30% chance to suppress spell damage. So this one is a bad one, but the good one is rare scourge monsters will drop one additional scar up. Also, it will have some kind of modifier uh, of how you will encounter the scourge league mechanic. So for example, this one shift into nightmare, or nightmare on killing a rare or unique enemy, but you cannot manually shift into nightmare so the first mon monster rare monster you will kill you will go into nightmare and you basically can then click the button to go out of it at any point and then go back again if you kill another rare monster okay now i also want to quickly mention the other things uh, announced in this trailer so not just the uh, leg mechanic and after that I'm gonna go over how to make currency with this leak. So first thing is and most important thing is the Atlas Masteries. So here you can see the Atlas has been changed quite a lot but the most important thing is that now these cluster, these nodes clusters will have this icon in the middle and this is basically a mastery and they will have a few categories so for example this one is resistance and ailment protection mastery and to get it you have to choose the notable for uh, this cluster so you would have to apply this passives this passives here and this one here or this one here and here and then you can apply one additional point into mastery and then you can choose one of these modifiers and let's say here there is a different mastery you would have a different set of uh, masteries for this one but let's say here at the bottom right there is the same mastery as it is here so you would be for example able to choose this one go for corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you and then you go here and you go for the same mastery and now you will be, will be able to get for example 15 percent to all resistances and chaos resistances so it's just a further improvement of passive tree and now you don't have to, to go to specific spots to be able to get uh, specific mods that you can get from the masteries. So for example, this triangle might be present here, but it also might be present in the ranger zone, the templar zone and so on. So you will be able to get these masteries in a lot of spots on your passive tree. Some other announcement that I just want to mention, now we will have guild hideouts, which I don't really care about, but I guess that's nice for the guilds. Uh, also, the expedition is going core, but the artifacts will be no longer tradable, but the rural items, so coinages and so on, still will be tradable. And we have some expedition mods on the Atlas. Also, the Atlas endgame has been changed a bit. We have less maps on the Atlas and also four zones instead of eight. So the Atlas is a bit simpler, but we still have the same amount of the uh, bonuses. So 
now instead of 160 maps we will have i believe like 118 but the points instead of giving one percent of uh bonus chance to get higher tier maps they will give 1.5 so in the end the rewards are, will be pretty much the same from them and the last one is the uber content so we got uber blighted map uber uh, bridge stones uber uh, timeless uh, conflict domain of timeless conflict and sim simulacrums have been improved but i am not gonna go over them right now i'm gonna make separate videos for that okay so now now let's go over the ways to make currency so i believe there will be three ways of making currency so first one is you're gonna just run the scourge and you're gonna transform the items preferably probably unique because it's just gonna be pretty annoying to find a good rare items with good mods because obviously the item is corrupted once you transform it so you can no longer change the mods on it so you will have to find some good rare mod, rare, rare items and then corrupt it so i would probably suggest to buy some cheap uniques maybe like a face breaker gloves or some kind of chests and so on and just corrupt them and hope for some good modifiers and then sell them while at the same time you will also in the bottom slots you will uh, transform the maps and after you corrupt them a few times depending on how uh, good it's gonna be you will want to corrupt them or transform them multiple times and then just sell them for the people that want to run them and that's pretty good if you don't have a good build that uh, can run them so you just need some currency quick so you can just transform them and sell them the second one is gonna be for more advanced player i would say so you will buy these maps and the maps you would want to buy uh, would probably def depend on your build you could buy let's say tier ones even tier ones give you rare scourge monsters drop additional one scar up which still is pretty nice if you will encounter like 10 rare scourge monsters that's already 10 scar ups so that's pretty good but if you go over here so tier 10 uh, so sketch tier 10 will give you for example the rare sketch monsters drop seven additional stack decks on top of that three additional maps so if you kill 10 rare sketch monsters you will get 70 stack decks that's insane amount of stack decks but obviously it would take a long time to upgrade them up to tier 10 and it's pretty difficult as you can see here 100 percent more damage and 45 percent less damage taken for the monsters so depending on how good is your build you might want to buy them but it's gonna be pretty hard to buy them especially some specific ones so let's say this one obviously these are corrupted so you can't change mods on, on them so this one has monsters reflect 18 percent physical damage so obviously if you are the physical beats you probably would not want to buy this one also this is tier 4 maybe you are not good enough for tier fours maybe you will want just tier one so or maybe you actually want something higher so like tier 10 so it's gonna be really annoying to buy them but if your build can handle most of them it's gonna be uh, probably uh, very good in terms of money making to just buy them and run a lot of them and the third way to make currency is probably something in between so you would probably just uh, alchemy your maps on your own you would look for the mods that you can run so let's say you are elemental build and you roll physical reflect you don't really care about it you would just mm, run it and then you would transform it multiple times and after you hit something bad let's say uh, on this map you would uh, hit something like monsters take less elemental damage and you are elemental build you would just sell this map and if you don't hit anything but you run it and you just make currency there is also uh, another option what to do with the map if it's basically like let's say bricked uh, so it has a mod that you don't want to run you can just upgrade it a second time because if you upgrade it a second time it will have new modifiers but it also has a chance that the modifiers will stack 
alongside the existing ones, uh, enhance their power or a chance to add a new modifier. So you can save the map if it has uh, bad mods for you, but if you reach, let's say, tier 10, you can no longer change it, so you just have to sell it. And if it has really hard modifiers, you might not even be able to sell it because, well, no one can really run them. So again, it, it, it is kind of like an ultimatum content, I would say. Uh, if you can run it, you can make insane amount of currency, but probably not that many people will be able to run them. But what I also think might be worth to do is as you can see, this map is tier 14, this one is tier 16, this one is tier 14. But what if you would take, let's say, map tier 5, which is super easy, and you scourge it up to tier 10? It still has a chance for a really good mod, like let's see here, rare scourge monster drop 7 additional stack decks. I mean, like 70 stack decks from tier 5 maps, that would be pretty insane. And it would be pretty easy, again, since you can do that on tier 5. But obviously we don't know if the modifiers, uh, the implicit scale with uh, map tiers. So maybe if you get, we would get the same modifier on like a tier five or below or yellow map, you would get instead like one or two or three stacked decks. But again, if your build can run, can't run higher tier maps, that's probably a very good option. Just go for lower tier, but higher scourged tier. Okay, so that's it for this video. I am gonna make more of them, showcasing more stuff that has been announced, and especially I'm gonna focus on currency making strategies. Also, after the path of building is gonna get up, uh, updated, I'm gonna make the Toxic Rain uh, starter build guide. So make sure to check it out when it's released. So thanks for watching and see you next time.